As I said, this ayah represents a, a summary of the entire Qur'an. What were they told to do except, and then Allah says, لِيَعْبُدُ So they may become ibad of Allah, so they may enter into slavery of Allah and worship. The first thing, is slavery is different from worship because slavery has no time associated with it. Worship is at a cer- certain time, at a certain place, a certain activity. But a slave, when is he a slave? When he's sleeping, he's a slave. When he's awake, he's a slave. When he's eating, when he's not eating, when he's changing his clothes, when he's working, when he's on vacation, he's always a slave. A slave, so slavery is a state of being. While worship is an act itself, you understand? Someone can be a worshiper at certain times, but they're not always a worshiper. But a slave is what? Always a slave. They're always a slave. That's one huge difference between the two. The other thing sometimes to be politically correct, some people translate instead of slave, they use the word servant. Or humble servant. Some translations offer the word servant. Which of course comes from the English word service. Right? And even service is, is, you know, you're a servant at your company. If you're an accountant, you serve your company. You're a servant for them. A servant could be a janitor. A servant could be somebody working a job. But in any of those scenarios, service is a give and take. It's an exchange. It's getting louder and louder. Hold on, I'll wait. Thank you. Okay. So, service is an exchange. I provide a service, what do I expect in return? To be paid. A service, and also service is specified. If your service is you're an accountant, you cannot be asked to wash the windows. Unless the economy is really bad. Right? But usually... <laughs> If your service is one thing, you, you don't, you're not asked for anything else. But in slavery, what are you asked to do? Everything that the master says. Everything that the master says you have to do. Right? So it's totally different from the idea of service, and significantly different also from the idea of worship. Both of those things are separate. That's the first issue with slavery. The second issue with slavery is as it is understood in the world, slavery is never something you want to enter into. Slavery is usually something forced upon you. Worship is something you do voluntarily. But slavery is never voluntary, it's always involuntary. No, but you could apply for a job as a, you know, in a service. You could be in a certain service industry and apply to become part of that service. But you don't apply to become what? You don't apply to become... You don't apply, give an application and say, I, I love taking beatings and I love chains around my neck. And, you, know, you don't do that. It doesn't make any sense. The one who is in slavery would want nothing more to be free of that slavery. That's the nature of slavery in human history. So it does conjure up negative images. Because of those negative images though, we cannot abandon the term and stop being true to the text. We have to still be true to the text, while still fully explaining the concept. The thing is, in this slavery, who's the master? Allah. And Allah is nothing like His creations. He's far above His creations. In every other slavery, another human being is the master. Right? Another human being is the master. But in this slavery, Allah is the master. And since Allah is completely different from all of His creations, when He is the master, He's a different kind of master. A kind of master that no other master can be like. Even in the Fatiha, before we call Him Rabb, what do we say? Alhamdulillahi Rabb. We say Alhamdulillah first. Which means we praise Him and we show Him gratitude first. No slave, no master is praised. No master is shown gratitude except Allah. Every other master is cursed. Every other master is complained about. But Allah, before He even tells us He's master, what does He tell us? Alhamdulillah. Right? It's a different kind of master. Which means if He's a different kind of master, we must be a different kind of slave. You understand so far? So now what is this concept of slavery that we're getting at? Every other slavery is coerced, it's forced, but this slavery is willing. You walk into this slavery. You accept this slavery yourself. Even in Fatiha, he didn't say, "Urbudu, enslave yourselves, worship and enslave yourselves." We said, "Iya kanabudu." We declared it. We we enter into the slavery and worship of you only. So now this is the uniqueness of Allah's mastery is that we enter into this slavery willingly, and we enter into it willingly. And secondly, that this slavery, instead of being based on anything else, the primary drive. The primary drive of this slavery, instead of the master being hated, is that the master is loved. It's a different kind of slavery. What were those five conditions that I was referring to before? The first of them is actually love. That to be a slave of Allah, you have to love Allah. You can't be considered his slave until you love him. And what that love means is everything else you love must be less than the love you have for 
Allah. And every other thing you love must be dictated by the love you have for Allah. So you cannot love your wife or your children or your family or your whatever unless that love is taba'an. It's underneath. It's in submission to the love you have for Allah. That's the first condition of slavery. The second is obedience. You know, لَا طَاعَةَ لِمَخْلُوقٍ فِي مَعْصِيَةِ الْخَالِقِ Like the Messenger says, وسلم, there's no obedience to the creation in, in a while disobeying the Creator, basically. Okay? In other words, we can obey, you have to obey your boss, you have to obey traffic laws, yes, you have to obey other things, but none of those obediences can exist while you are in disobedience to Allah. That obedience comes first. That's the second consideration of Allah's slavery. So the first one was love, and the second one is obedience. The third one is sincerity. And what, what that means is, everything you do is you do it as a slave now. It's not some things you do as a slave. You know, if you're a worshiper, only salah is for Allah, everything else is for you. Right? But if you're a slave, what is everything for? Or who is everything for? Everything's for Allah. Everything, your job is for the sake of Allah, your family is for the sake of Allah, your worship is for the sake of Allah, everything's for the sake of Allah. But when you just think of yourself as a worshiper, you only give one part of your life to Allah. You don't give the whole thing to Allah. So Allah teaches us in the Qur'an, إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Rub again. My prayer belongs to Allah. It's for, for His sake. My sacrifice is for His sake. My life and my death are also for His sake. You know what that means practically? It practically means that when I make career goals, when I make family goals, when I make business goals, what is my ultimate agenda? What's my lo- what, are, what are these things for? They are for the service of my master. It's a change of attitude. So even most Muslims today, when we look at the ayat, when Allah calls us to become His slave, what do we reduce it to most of the time? We reduce it to worship. He's asking for something way more. It's something huge, it's something tremendous. So we've got, we've got three conditions so far, what do you have? We have love, obedience, sincerity. Our motives are now directed by Allah, sincerely for the sake of Allah, and that's gonna come up in this ayah. Then two more. The next condition is trust. Tawakkul. We have to have trust in our master. By the way, these five conditions, which scholar did I say? Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. This is these five conditions of slavery, right? You have to have absolute trust in this master. Whatever he does, you have to trust is good for you. Whatever he gives you is good for you. Whatever he didn't give you, he didn't give you because it's good for you. If you got something, it's from Allah, it's a gift. If you didn't get something, there's also good in that. You have absolute trust. Whatever may happen, whatever may occur, it is because of Allah's decree. إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِّن قَبْلِ أَنَّ نَبْرَأَهَا لِكَيْ لَا تَأْسَوْ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا it's simple. You know, whatever he may give you, so you don't become sad over what you lose, you don't become overjoyed over what you gain, everything is from Allah. Your tawakkul is placed, your complete reliance and trust is placed in Allah. So this, ma- this slave does not put his trust in means. You don't trust your car because it's a reliable, reliable company. You don't trust your family. Your trust in them comes from who? From trust, your expectations come from Allah, not from your family. When you place your trust in creation, you will always be disappointed. When you place your trust in Allah, nothing will disappoint you. Nothing will disappoint you. So this is trust, tawakkul. And finally, it's the terms of slavery, which is a very interesting concept. The terms of slavery means, you know, in every relationship there are terms. The teacher and the student. There's a relationship. There's a relationship. And in that relationship, both parties have certain responsibilities. In a parent and child relationship, again, both sides have certain responsibilities, don't they? Employer, employee, both sides have certain understanding. You have to come to work at this time, you have to leave at this time. You'll be paid on this day, this is how much you will be paid. Do this, don't do this, there's terms. We understand that the terms of this slavery are not di- dictated by us. We understand that the terms of this slavery are dictated by him, the master. In other words, what does it mean to be a good slave? That definition doesn't come from me. That those standards don't come from me. I cannot think for myself, I think I'm a pretty good slave. I think I'm doing alright. From your own assumption. You can't do that. Those standards of what makes you a slave and what makes you a rebel, those standards are dictated by him and you have no hand in them. You have no say in them. This is the problem of most people and their relationship with God. Even if they'll tell you, I love God too man, you Muslims, you love God? We love Him too. I love God too. Well, how do you please him? Whatever my heart tells me. My heart tells me this is good. That's why I do it. That concept doesn't exist for us. Why not? Because who's dictating what's good and what's bad? 
Allah Azza wa Jalla. You put the fitrah inside of, of us, yes. But what's dictated is it comes from the master. These are the conditions of slavery. And this is the essence of this deen. In the end, what is this guidance about? You become slave, you accept him as master. That's the essence of Qur'an. In the end, that is the, the juice of the matter. And it is this concept that is nowadays being separated or, or not being understood in line with worship. These are two separate things. So in my recommended translation, Wallahu ta'ala alam, they were not commanded except that they may fall into slavery and worship of Allah. 